Hello Autodesk people and welcome back to our tips and tricks session. This is a video uh, series continuation of uh, how, how to manipulate and work with fabrication parts inside of the Revit 2017. So the last video we were discussing how do we manipulate the hanger so that when you add insulation it the hanger itself does not automatically upsize. So now that you've seen how to do that let's go ahead and transition to the next topic which is also related to hangers are there hanger tags? And the simple answer is no, there's no hanger tags, not that I know of that's built in out of the box, but I do wanna show you how you can create one and leverage it for your documentation purposes. All right, so let's get started here. Um, I'm just gonna remove the insulation here so we can work with uh, w work directly with the ductwork and the hangers. All right, so Obviously, you guys might be aware that we can use the annotation features to tag by category and it will automatically tag um, whatever documentation is set up specific to that object. Um, oh, I forgot about this. When you're in a 3D view and you, you're trying to do some documentation, you have to lock the 3D view. So I guess this is a good thing that I forgot to do this. Um, let's lock the 3D view and you will find that lock feature um, down in the bottom here. Um, let me go ahead and highlight that because it's kind of hard to see. Right now it's, it looks like a little uh, 3D view of a house with a padlock. It's open. Unlock 3D view. So if I just click on that it'll lock, it'll save the orientation and lock the view. And I'll call this, um, I'll just call this uh, fabrication hangers, uh, fabrication ductwork and hangers. And as you can see the icon has changed. It's very difficult to see on this high resolution so I'll kind of bring that in. That little house has a, a golden padlock that's closed now. So you can tell very quickly if you if you have an, uh, an unlocked view or a, a locked view. Now that it's locked I can go ahead and throw in my annotation here. Now if I try to annotate that particular hanger what you're going to notice is that there's nothing set up in this drawing, in this model here for the hanger. However, we do have a specification that's set up specifically for the uh, the ductwork and it'll, it'll automatically read whatever that size is. So let's take a look at this and figure out, okay, what's going on here that's different and how come I can't get that hanger documented automatically? So if I look at the multi-category under the annotation ribbon, if I look at multi-category, this allows me to take, oh, excuse me, um, I, I meant to tag all. If I look at tag all, you have all of these categories, okay? You've got the category listing, and then it's automatically going to load, um, place a tag that's loaded in the, in, the, um, in the project. And whenever it sees an MEP fabrication ductwork uh, category, it's gonna load this particular tag which is called MEP fab duct size. Alright so let's take a look at this tag and uh, I can go edit the family and I want to show you a few things about this that are going to make this absolutely detrimental to our hangers. So what you're looking at these are the reference planes and these are the origin reference planes so that's the Y plane and that's the X plane and in the middle here you're gonna see that we have the size and this is what's referred to as a label this is a label and you can edit the label and you have all these parameters to choose from when you're dealing specifically with this type of object it's called MEP fabrication ductwork okay so it's looking for the available fields from the MEP fabrication ductwork and I can go in here and take a look at any of these right so what we want to do is we want to change it so it's not MEP fabrication ductwork, we want the fabrication hangers. So how do we do that? So up in the ribbon, you'll have the ability to go to the create uh, ribbon and you'll see that you have the modify tool, you've got the properties, you've got the family types, but this is the one that we're looking for. It's called family category and parameters. So I can go look at that and I just want to show you that right now we are looking at the family which is referred to as MEP fabrication ductwork and that that is looking at uh, you know this information here 
and we want to change that so it looks at the uh, the fabrication where are you the fabrication hangers where are you sorry guys I kinda lost oh I'm looking at an architecture list <laughs> So I'm filtering everything by architecture. I should be filtering it out by mechanical. All right, so we don't want the fabrication ductwork tags. We want fabrication hanger tags. And I'll hit OK. So what this will allow me to do is it's now looking for the family called fabrication hanger. And if I look at the label, I have to, I have to modify this label because from the fabrication hanger, these are the uh, fields that are, are currently available to me. And unfortunately, guys, I'm looking at this list and I've realized we don't have all of the parameters that come from, uh, that come from Fabrication Academy P. We don't have all of those parameters. And I wanna show you what those parameters look like. So let me switch, um, let me switch now to Fabrication Academy P and let me add a hanger in here. Let me just add a hanger. And that's fine. I can I can use that split ring diameter any round. Okay. So let's use a half strap. That's fine. So these are the parameters guys that I'm expecting to see but in Revit for some reason we can't see all of this stuff. I want to be able to see the diameter. I want to be able to see, you know, different types of um, different types of uh, parameters that I can choose from, you know, un from any of these. I want to be able to see those. Unfortunately, these parameters, for some reason, I I've realized since the time of making this video, I I've realized that we're not seeing all of those, uh, all of the the uh, the parameters. So there's no size, is what I'm getting at. There's no size. So what am I left with then? These are the typical Revit family parameters that you would typically see. And I'm just not seeing anything that's uh, that's going to give me the ability to do that. So maybe what I'll do is I'll use this what's referred to as an instance parameter called comments. And I'll push that in. So there's this little uh, arrow that points to the right. It's green. And then I'll remove the assembly name. I'll pull it to the left. And I'll hit OK here. Now with the grips, I'll just kind of pull the grips so it stays kind of you know centered at the origin there. And what I'll do is I will um, load and close this into my, uh, oh, you know what, before I do that, I want to save this as a new family type. And I'll put this on my, my desktop. Go ahead and save it on my on my desktop. You probably want to save this in a in a better place other than where I'm putting it on my desktop. I'm just doing that for the demonstration. But typically, you would put this in your family um, file folder organization on your network somewhere. So I'll go ahead and load this into my project. When I'm done saving, I'll go ahead and load and close. And um, now you'll see I have the ability to uh, inside of the Revit environment. I'll have the ability to tag that particular uh, that particular hanger, and right now what you're seeing is a question mark because it has no idea right now has no idea what the comment is. I haven't done anything with the comment, so I'll go ahead and um, what I want to do is I want to add the comment to all of these at once. So what I'll do is I'll use the select all instances in the view. So I've select all four of these, and now I'll go to the comments and say, okay, this is a, a 14 inch uh, diameter hanger. So when I do that, it'll automatically read that, that, um, that particular comment. And guys, I don't, I don't really like this. I don't like the fact that you have to type that in. Um, if I were to change the duct work, uh, my expectation is that the, the hanger would change its size as well, right? But um, in this instance, um, I'm not going to have the ability to automatically uh, see the change in the ductwork because it's reading the comment. And the comment is a manual field that I just type 14 inches into. So even if the hanger changes, it's not going to obey the classic Revit parametrics, which is, 
you know, as it changes in one place, it changes everywhere, including the tags and the schedules and stuff like that. So this is just comments at this point. I don't like that we have to do that. And, um, you know, I'm bringing this up to the development's attention to see if we can get the additional parameters. I'm sure everybody wants to see that. But um, I haven't found a way to automatically list the size, for instance, of the hanger. And, um, I mean, there's several things that I would want to know about the hanger. I would want to know the strap, the strap size. I would want to know the rod diameter. I would want to know um, the you know where the top of the deck is, where, where the top of the deck that it's it's inserting itself into. Um, I would want to know the bottom of the duct or the pipe. I would want to know all of those things, and those are feels that you would typically get from um, you know the, the the parametric portion of the ITM. It's just that we're not able to see them in Revit. So so hangers. Um, don't have by default they don't have tags you can make them I've shown you how to make them I hope that answers the question here but um, unfortunately it's a it's a manual property that I'm looking at here as opposed to available parameters that would automatically list that size for me so guys stay tuned for the next video that concludes the technical portion of this tips and tricks for Revit fabrication parts in the 2017 product um, stay tuned for the next installment of the continuation of our series.